Hi, my name is Eric Burns Guild, and in this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how Adobe Muse can be used to create a lovely portfolio for your photo photography. Inside of Muse, which is the new application to easily and quickly create websites from Adobe, you have many widgets and possible components to be able to create a website really simply. So you can see here, I've already created a first demo portfolio so that you can see how it's going to look. So if I get this out of the way here, just a tad, you can see that I have a portfolio which has some thumb thumbnails down on the left hand side. It's got a big image in the center. And if I preview this, you can see that, uh, so as it loads here, you can see that when I hover, I get a nice fade in effect. And when I click on the image, it's replaced here by the big one. So how do you do this in Muse? Well, it's not that difficult. So I'm going to quit out of this portfolio page. And I'm going to just add a new page here, which I'm going to call Portfolio 2. And this is going to be the name in the menu, which we're not going to care about too much. It's going to say Portfolio 2 up here. And then I'm going to go and drag back here my tool panel. And I'm going to go to the bottom where it says widgets library. And here I'm going to select, you can see we have compositions with different available styles, but we also have the bottom called slideshows. And it's just falling off the screen here. So I'm going to go ahead and select the thumbnails one. It's at the bottom, which means it's going to fall off the screen. But if I go ahead and, and drag it back in here, you're going to see here that we get the thumbnails widget here. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to scale this up. I want to make it part of the bigger page. So I'm going to first of all hide some stuff that I don't want. So clicking on this little blue facing arrow for a contextual options menu, that allows me to change the options of this widget. So I'm, I want the fade transition. I want it to not autoplay it. And I want to make sure it fills the frame proportionally for new images. And I don't need the previous and next buttons. I don't need the counter and I don't need the captions, but the thumbnails would be appreciated. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to zoom out here of my website just so I can get a bigger view. I'm going to double click on this element so that I get twice so that I get to the main image here. And I'm going to position that to my right edge here. And I'm going to drag it so that it is this big. And just making sure here we go. And then I'm going to go and grab the thumbnails and I'm going to scale the container for the thumbnails like this and down just to match the same height as the slideshow that we have. So now that we have them matching each other and there are the same options for all available areas in the widget, I'm going to go ahead and double click to get into the thumbnail here. And I'm just going to remove the other two. And what I'm going to do is scale this thumbnail up. So I'm going to move it to I'm just going to go ahead here and move it so that I get to the side. And I'm going to make it larger. Now, keep in mind, when I add a bigger image here, it's going to fill the entire frame up. So you want to make sure you're fi we're filling this so that it is as wide as you want it to be. In this case, you can have it be 200 by whatever. I'm going to choose here, how about 207 by 130. 129. This is going to look good. Okay, so what I can now do is I can go ahead and remove the final image here. And this is sort of a bad quirk. So I need to remove all the images that were there previously so that I can go into my options and click add images. I can select here for my demo files. I've prepared a number of portfolio images. I'm going to select them. And Muse is going to add them in. So as you can see here, we have um, quite a large thumbnail area, whereas this image part isn't as big in this example. So you're going to have to tweak this. You might decide to make the thumbnail smaller after all. 
And if you go ahead and make them smaller, for example, let's make them about this big. Well, let's make them a little bigger so that they're almost square. They are square right now. Okay. And let's move the container with them. So let's position it about here. And then I can go into the big image and I can pull up the frame for the big image so that it is 100%. And then I can start again working the thumbnails so that their height matches the big image here. So you can spend a little bit more time, I'm not going to do it in precise detail here, just to make sure you get the proportions right and how you want it to line up with the image. So if I preview this right now, it's going to have a pretty nice result here. You can click on any image and it's going to open it in this big image, which is very nice and it looks fancy. But there is no visual indication that these images are clickable. So what I'm going to go, I'm going to go back in and instead of the widgets library, I'm going to select states. So let me pull up states here. And if I click on this thumbnail viewer, and have the states. You get three different states. You have normal, rollover, mouse down, and active. And what I'm going to do is make normal here my active choice. Make sure the one thumbnail is selected. I'm going to come here to the transparency indicator and drop it to how about 65. So that all of these are now transparent in their normal rollover, mouse down, and active mode. But when I roll over, I wanted to go back up to 100. And the way you apply styles is it's going to get for the mouse down as well, which is fine. And for the active one, I also want to make it 100. So here's what we're going to do now. I'm going to preview it again and look at how it looks. So now when I hover over it, you're going to see there's a clear visual indication that something's going to happen. So if you click on it, you get the image just as before, but now it, there's a bit of elegance to this. So really, it isn't harder than this to create a portfolio from the widgets that are available shipping with Muse and creating a nice portfolio for yourself. So thank you for watching this Muse tutorial. My name is Eric Bernskild, and I'll see you in another tutorial. Bye bye.